What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? It's Wednesday, the 27th of October. The joint is brought to you by MeUndies. Get ready for Turkey Day with MeUndies. You already know they're the softest fucking underwear in the world, but these puppies can stretch. If you got your MeUndies on Thanksgiving, you can have seconds and thirds. You can eat a whole goddamn table. That's why I love me undies. I've been working with me undies for eight years now. I got a whole drawer full of them, and I wouldn't wear any other underwear. They're soft, they're comfortable, they fit just right, they don't interfere with my fucking jeans, and they don't go up your ass half the time. They are tremendous. This Thanksgiving, give your gratitude some attitude. You might not get along with your creepy family. But if you give your cranky old fucking aunt some panties, she might write you into the will. Take a chance, Columbus did, cocksuckers. MeUndies is the perfect partner to get you through the holidays. Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever it is, throw on their onesie. It'll hug your butt with softness. Perfect for watching the game or just taking a little after-dinner nap on Thanksgiving before Dallas comes on. The best part is MeUndies is for everybody. Available in sizes from extra small to big motherfuckers like me with 4X. I'm not a 4X, I'm like a 2X. MeUndies has a little something for everybody at the table. MeUndies has a great offer for the joint family. For any first-time purchases, get 15% off and free shipping. Free shipping and 15% off. MeUndies also has a promise. If you're not satisfied with any product for any reason, you can return your order for a full refund within 45 days. To get 15% off your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guaranteed, go to MeUndies.com slash Joey's. That's MeUndies.com slash Joey. J-O-E-Y. Listen, I love MeUndies. I got a pair on right now. They're the reef underwear. They're fucking tremendous. MeUndies.com slash Joey. The joint is also brought to you by, from the heart of fucking New Jersey, DraftKings, this Saturday night, live from motherfucking Abu Dhabi. It's UFC 267, Blankowitz against Glover Teixeira. Listen, DraftKings Sportsbook is the official sports betting partner of the UFC. They got a knockout offer for the title fight. You ready? If you're new to DraftKings, I got a deal for you. And if you knew why you knew, how come you're not here already? What the fuck is wrong with you? This is the weekend to get on board. I'm going to tell you why. You got World Series. You got UFC. You got pro football. You got college basketball. You got pro basketball, college football. But you got a tremendous UFC card this week with UFC 267. And next week, November 6th, it's live from the garden, cocksuckers. Tremendous. Five bucks on either fighter. If your guy wins, you get $200 in free bets. Will the champ hang on to his belt or will the veteran from Brazil snatch it from him? Who knows? Either way, you could just bet $5 and you could win $200 if your fighter wins. Listen to me. DraftKings is great. And I got to tell you something else. They got a social network on DraftKings. So once you go over to DraftKings, I'll be putting picks on there. You could see what I'm betting. I could see what you're betting. We'll be friends on DraftKings. And that'll get the party started for fucking real. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can withdraw your cash whenever the fuck you want. They got a tremendous casino. If I got five, ten minutes, I get the casino and I put a dollar and you play blackjack you play five hands I don't know what I'm doing but I'm fucking learning I got 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 you might as well have a good time cocksucker so do me a favor download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right fucking now use promo code Joey J-O-E-Y then you throw five dollars on UFC 267 main event and win two hundred dollars in free bets if your fighter wins it's that easy that's code Joey, J-O-E-Y, this Saturday at DraftKings. And next Saturday, there's a tremendous UFC card, and the UFC and DraftKings will be there for you. Remember, must be 21 or older. New Jersey, Indiana, Pennsylvania, Colorado, Tennessee. And I also want to thank, I want to welcome Connecticut. If you're from Connecticut, you got DraftKings coming at you. New customers only. You got to deposit $5. That's it. 
a minimum wager is required of one dollar. Five dollar deposit, one dollar to pick up two hundred dollars in free bets. The bad news is you only get one per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Now, if you got a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLE. I don't want no fucking people here calling me up going, Joey, you fucked me. I'm down 10000 No, that can't happen on DraftKings. They're safe, reliable, and secure. You can't bet over your head, and it's fucking fun. You got the social network. You got football, basketball, UFC, NBA, NBA. That. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Bet a dollar on a fighter. Bet $5 for the main event. And if it wins, it wins $200 in free bets. All right? Call 1-800-GAMBLER if you got a problem. If not, let's get this party started. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and let's win some motherfucking money. The joint is also brought to you by... Come on, guys. CBD Lion. I'll tell you, part of my therapy has been the CBD Lion. I put the 1,500 milligram tincture under my tongue. Holy shit. It's like I go to acupuncture every day. I feel fucking great. Listen to me. I don't know if CBD could help you, but go look, check, read. CBD, CBN, CBY. CBN, you fucking sleep like a baby. CBD, it calms you down it helps with pain relief cbd lion makes it for easier for you to get cbd whether it's the vapor pen the reefer the kinesiology tape the bat balls the extra strength cream the, the gummy bears which are fucking fantastic listen i can't tell you all the great things about cbd lion they've carried me through the last two years and also helped me through a surgery and also also helped me through a little mental fucking burp i had there cbd lion is the best cbd available in the market you're asking questions to some fucking kid who never had a fucking problem cbd lion is tremendous go to their website cbdlion.com read read the third party lab results if there's something you don't know about cbd you'll know it after you read the third party lab results see what cbd cbn and cby could do for you go to cbdline.com right now read and order yourself some tincture or some cream for your knee or some kinesiology tape for your shoulder or a bat ball to put in the bathtub for your back cbd lion has you covered pressing code joey or joint and get 20% off the product delivered right to your house. That's the deal Uncle Joey's showing up with today. CBD Lion, code word Joey or joint. Let's get this motherfucking party started. What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? It's Wednesday, the 27th of the month. Halloween week. I love this fucking week. I've always loved this week. I mean, listen, it's not like I'm going to go fucking trick-or-treating or whatever. I eat like a bag of M&Ms. That's it. You know, lately, that's how I fall asleep. Because at night, when I go upstairs, I go, I stop in the spare bedroom and I get the cat. She's out cold in there laying down. I need my little service cat, so I go in there and get gray. And when I'm going to get her, what I do is I turn the light on, but there's a ceiling fan. If you turn the ceiling fan on, she don't like it. She's scared of that fucking ceiling fan. She just keeps looking at the ceiling fan the whole time when you turn it on. So I'll stop by the by the office, and my wife had all, my wife's doing trunk or treat. You know, where you get your cars and you put them in a parking lot, and the kids come from trunk to trunk. 
So they're, they're fucking her and my daughter upstairs fucking filling bags up of candy. So for the, I swear to God, like maybe not last week, but maybe the week before, for like three nights in a row, I would go upstairs and get the cat, and I would look on the bed, and there'd be a bag of M&M's, those little, little tiny bags, those little snack bags, like eight M&M's in them. I'd fucking open those things up right as I'm going to bed, and I'd put them in my mouth as I'm walking to piss before I go to bed. And I'd lay in bed for 10 minutes. I get a little sugar buzz. But what comes up must go down. That's the best sleeping pill there is. Fucking nine or 10 M&Ms. I was sleeping like a fucking baby, dog. Just grabbing some M&Ms and hitting the fucking crib. And ba-boom. That's how you sleep. So, no, nah, it's true. You get that little sugar buzz. And next thing you know, I'm waking up at 5 in the morning going, fuck, I passed out. I ate those nine fucking M&Ms. I'm fucking out of it, Jack. Great week so far. Shitty day yesterday. Fucking World Series last night. Tremendous. I lo- Listen, I love this time of the year. I love the weather is nice. I, I tell you, when it comes to Jersey, New York, the East Coast, listen to me. I don't know. Boston gets a little colder. I got to be honest with you. The best months to be here are April and May and fucking September and October. The summer sucked this summer. We got rain every weekend. We got rain during the week. Fucking September 1st came, and it was beautiful. It was 60 to 80 every fucking day. Sun shining, hotter than fuck. You could Look, I walked around with a fucking tan. I just sit out there 10, 15 minutes a fucking day. Uh, it's been a gorgeous fucking month. The, the leaves are starting to change. You know, this time of the year is fucking great. There's only one thing that gets to me around now. Once I see the Halloween commercials, like once October 15th comes, I start getting a little sad, man. It's weird because I keep my composure pretty much. I think I I broke down on here one time in February when it was Ralphie May. I was taking those pain pills and I was all fucked up. But it's weird. I don't really get down about things. Like I get down, like I got down a couple weeks ago when it was Ralphie's anniversary on October 6th, when I say get down, I mean, I just get quiet for a few hours, you know, it's not like I'm crying, or I get fucking depressed, or, you know, none of that shit, I'm not gonna tell you it's the end of the world, none of that shit, you know, these people, I'm having a rough day now, this shit, this makes me think, it just makes me think, like this time of the year, Makes me think because uh, November 8th, not this Monday coming. This Monday coming is November 1st. But the following Monday is November 8th, and that's my mother's 42nd death anniversary. 42 fucking years. Now, I sit here sometimes, and I say to myself, what the fuck happened? Like, how the fuck did I live 58 years already? 58. I'm 50 fucking eight. I was just 21. I was just 27. I was just 33. I was just 44. I was 50. And then one day you're fucking 58. You don't, that's, that's the, those are the denominations I remember. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I remember when I'm 21, when I'm 25, I went to jail. When I'm 33, I got into comedy. I remember that. You know, when I was 37, I was in Seattle fucking around. When I was 40, I was now, you know, I was in L.A. when I was 37. What am I talking about? But, and then I was four. I remember being 44 and going, I got to quit doing coke. I got to get my life together. And here we are 14 fucking years later. But time fucking flew. I mean, you know, when you're in high school, time is like fucking debt. Even the summers are slow. But once high school ends, it seems like it just moves. It just moves. I just remember it being August 28th and me going to fucking Pittsburgh. It's already October fucking 27th. I was just in Pittsburgh two fucking months ago. Those two months just flew fucking by. I still remember going, wow, in three months, the many saints are coming out. It's out. It's been out for a fucking month. It's just time is flying, but to, not to lose track of what we're talking about here. When it comes to my mom, like everybody knows I experienced death at a young age. So it's kind of crazy. Whenever somebody loses somebody, I'm their first fucking email. I'm their first message. Whether it be on, and I'm not talking about friends of mine. I'm talking about people who follow the podcast, people who follow me on Patreon, people who follow me on Twitter, Instagram. I swear to God, when they lose a family member, nine out of ten, I'm the first guy they send the message to. 
and it's a sad message you know i got a couple on patreon this summer from guys that lost their mom and they were fucking miserable and they always ask me the same question they go joey how long am i gonna feel shitty for and i lie to them i lie to them i lie to you and i'm sorry i do i have to lie to you because i cannot tell you the truth at that time i lie to people when they email me i tell them listen man i'm sorry for your loss I know how close you were with moms. I mean, everybody's close with moms. We have disagreements from time to time. We don't agree with them, but it's your mom, you know. So I understand where you're coming from. And to answer your question about how long do you feel shitty for, I go, just, uh, you're going to feel shitty for a while, a bit, you know. That's a big fucking lie. And then I tell them the simplest answer I know, because it's what I did. Grow up to be the man your mother wanted you to be. You ever been in the kitchen and your mom just says stupid shit to you, like, I really want you to join the Marines, and you're like, oh, boy. You know, I really want you to be a doctor, and you're like, fuck, I really want you to do this. My mom used to talk to me about that shit, the way all moms do. I don't know if your mom talked to you about that stuff, but she would talk to me about... uh you know, when you get older, when you when you get married, I don't think you should fucking drink. My mom would say little fucking things to me, you know. And I would, like, say, I'm fucking eight. Who's thinking about getting married? Who's talking about getting married here? What the fuck? Who brought that up? You know, my mom would just say, she would just say little things like that. So what I tell people usually is, listen, man, you want to make this easier? It's going to take a while. But to answer your question, grow up. To be the man your mother wanted you to be. And then they write me back. That sounds great. Thank you for getting back to me. I don't think they really understand what I'm saying. Nobody does. Nobody could understand. What do you mean the man my mother wanted me to be? If they say their father died, I also tell them that. Grow up to be the woman or the man your father wanted you to be. That's really fucking important right there. That's really important. I, when my mother died, I'm going to tell you guys the evolution of it, and some of you are going to be like, what the fuck, Joey? When I found my mother on the floor, November 8th, that night at 3 in the fucking morning, I was tripping on acid, and I found her on the floor. I, I didn't know what to expect. Even today, it still feels like a fucking dream. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Uh, you know, I, I thought it was a fucking dream. You know, I... I finding your mother on the floor it's something that you never imagined you know growing up or whatever even now not really growing up because you don't imagine those things but now like i look at people and go man that guy's getting old he's getting up there i don't know how much time he's got left you know in the in whatever you know you know with my mother i never even looked at her and went like i couldn't even imagine my mother dying I could not even process that through my brain. The test of that was in the eighth grade. I dated a girl. I was going to go down there and fool around with her a little bit. I mean, we weren't having sex. We were dry humping, sucking tits, that type of shit. I was going to go down there to hang out with her one afternoon, like on fucking uh, Columbia. It was in February. It was like one of those Washington birthdays. This is when, in the old days, for you people who don't remember, they celebrated Lincoln's birthday on the 12th and Kennedy and uh, George Washington's birthday on the 19th. So you got two Mondays off back to back in February. Now they're fucking chintzy about it. They give us one fucking day for both fucking dudes. That sucks dick. But, <laughs> but uh, I went down there on a Monday. We had off and I was all hot and sticky, ready to fucking go. And I said, to her, what time does your dad get home? She goes, about five. I go, what time does your mom get home? She goes, my mom is dead. Hard on, died. Listen to me. I was in the eighth grade. You know when you're in the eighth grade, you're eternally fucking horny. Like, that's all you fucking think about is fucking sucking, but nobody's fucking you. Nobody's sucking your dick. You, you're not even in the fucking ballpark. You know what I'm saying? But I, I was hoping that, you know, I would have sex. I hope. I think, you know. And I go down there, and she tells me that she's got no mother. Holy fuck, my dick just died. I looked at this chick and I was like, Ugh, what do you mean you got no fucking mother? 
And she's like, my mother died when I was a little girl. In the back of my mind, I'm like, what could you have done in your previous life to lose your fucking mother? That was like fucking un heard of to me that your mother died. I didn't think moms died. I thought moms died when you turned 50 or something, when you could handle it. But for your mom just, I swear to God, for your mom just to die like that, just die, I never even thought of that was possible. I never thought of that was possible. I dumped that girl. When I walked out of that fucking apartment that February 12th, that Monday at 2 in the afternoon, I never fucking saw her again. She kept calling me. It took me about a week to say, listen, I can't see you no more because I'm going away for basketball camp and I'll be training for freshman summer ball and all this shit. And she's like, what are you talking about? You live three miles away. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm just going to be, I did not want, she called me crying. She was upset. I did not give a fuck. I was not hanging around with somebody who didn't have a mom. That is not going to happen in my realm. So what happens two years later, I lose my fucking mom. So the first person that came to mind when I saw my mom on the floor with that purple fucking arm was Colleen. That was her name, Colleen. I'll never forget it. In fact, I've even, you know how many times I've gone on Facebook, found her, and I want to send her a message to apologize for my behavior in 1978, and I can't. I can't. I was, it was, I was a fucking jerk off to her. You know, at least I, and I wasn't mean to her or anything. I just stopped talking to her. I just couldn't even deal with a person that didn't have a mother. I was like, this is terrible. You know, this is like Satan's cousin or some shit. She don't have a fucking mother. I can't deal with her. So I thought, I even go on Facebook now. She lives in Ramsey, New Jersey or something like that. I found that she's still a fucking knockout. But I, I mean, for the five years, for like 10 years, I've been trying to apologize to her. And I just can't. So when I found my mom, I mean, I was numb. When, when somebody dies, you're in shock. Your body goes into shock. You don't know it. You don't feel it. You don't feel it coming over you. But your body's in fucking shock. Your mental's in shock. I remember the next day I went to fucking school. In fact, that's what really made me think about my mom. Because it's it was, I took Mercy last Monday to the baking class. And as I was going in, they said, remember the state fucking uh, whatever the teachers convention no school november 5th 4th and 5th and i'm like fuck and that was the week my mother died my mother's anniversary is really the 8th but she really no, she died on a tuesday night and that that's the week that you have school on monday and wednesday but you're off tuesday thursday and friday so when i found my mom on tuesday night I, dog i went to school I didn't know what to do. I couldn't sit along with my fucking thoughts in a house that I was fucking scared of as it was a haunted fucking house. So I just got up and went to fucking school. I didn't know what to do. And then one of the teachers saw me and he goes, didn't your mom die last night? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, what the fuck are you doing here? I go, what, what are my options? What are you going to do, sit at home and wait? And they go, no, we got to take you home. You can't be it. So they drove me to fuck home. And I went home and I had to deal with it. But what really bothered me about my mother's death was after I buried her. I'm ashamed to tell you guys this, but it'll, yeah, I'll clear it up. For 45 days, I didn't feel nothing. We buried my mom like on the 12th or the 13th. My Aunt Zoraida, the lady I did the Comedy Central, this is not happening about, stayed with me till Thanksgiving Day until I moved in with the Benders. And I got to be honest with you guys, I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel numb. As a matter of fact, like by mid-December, I was questioning myself. Like, did I not love this woman? What the fuck is the matter with me, man? I'm not struggling. I was out partying at night. I was having a good fucking time. But that album by Pink Floyd came out, The Wall. And The Wall had a song Mother on it. That album came out November 28, 1979. My mom died November 8, 1979. So that album was the most popular fucking album of all time. So the whole month of December, that album was... Anywhere you went, that album was on. And there's a song in that album called Mother. Mother, do you think she'll drop the bomb? All that shit. And I would go to these places, and I would be in there, and this song would come on, and I would fucking shun it. Like I would just shut it down in my my mind and in my ears. I would just try to shut it down as much as I could. 
And this went on for a few weeks every time that song came on. And I could see even my friends, whenever that, whenever we were playing that song in the shed, my friends would always like, you know, try to lower it or let's put on a different album. And I would go, no, 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 leave the wall on. Don't, don't fucking change because of me, you know. But one night it was like fucking little after Christmas, a couple nights after Christmas. And I went to one of those fucking parties and I was sitting there with my friends having a great fucking time and that song came on and I was high and it just took me somewhere. I don't know. It just, my emotion, my whole state of mind changed. Like a sadness just came over my fucking body. It was rough. People told me that once when somebody dies, the hardest is the first holiday, you know. Thanksgiving was a little rough. But again, that's why I was like, fuck, I'm not really going through this. I thought I would be breaking down and crying all the time. That wasn't the case at all. December came. As the holidays approached, I got a little sad. But again, I wasn't sad enough to stay in or anything like that. So I just played the fucking hand. But that night after Christmas, like two or three nights after Christmas, woo, whenever I think of that, man, I fucking was at a party. We were all having a good time, talking to chicks, you know, the whole fucking deal. And all of a sudden that album came on and mother came on and I was like, fuck, I'm getting anxiety. Something wasn't right. I didn't feel right. And I went outside and I stood by a car for a little while. And all of a sudden I started feeling dizzy. It wasn't the alcohol. It wasn't the weed. It wasn't the acid. It wasn't none of that shit. I know. <laughs> You're like, Joey, you were probably on two hits of acid and drinking. No, no, no. What? I'll tell you when something like that. Just something. It was like a, 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 my whole body was sad. And I went outside, and it was December 28th, 27th. Guys, it's fucking freezing out. And I couldn't go back into that party. This thing had taken over me. And out of nowhere, I started barfing. Out of nowhere, I just started barfing, barfing, barfing. It was like my stomach had had it, everything had had it, and all I could think about was my mother in that cemetery freezing because it was so fucking cold out. That's all I could think about. I go, she's out there with a fucking dress on in a casket freezing her ass off, and in my fucking acidy mind, I'm like, I'm going to go down there and get her out of that fucking casket. That was horrible. I fucking went down. You know, there was, there was a a fence, you know, outside the cemetery, and I knew the post that lined up with her grave, you know, with her gravestone. I already knew the post because when I would walk to school, I would stop and just look at the grave for a few minutes just to make sure she was dead. At this point, 45 days later, my mind was telling me she wasn't dead. It was fucking horrible. So I'll never forget that I fucking jumped the fence and I had gloves on, and I go, you know what? I don't have a fucking shovel. I have nothing. I found, like, a fucking twig, and I started digging up the fucking body. Like, not digging it up. I was, like, scraping the dirt. The ground was frozen. I wasn't going to get nowhere. After about 20, 30 fucking minutes, I started scraping that fucking ground, scraping it, scraping it. And I'm like, you know what? This is fucking crazy. And there was something else going on that I need to tell you. This is how fucking crazy the mind is. At her wake, everybody kept putting little bindles of cocaine in her casket. I stopped counting like at 20. There must have been an ounce of coke and little aluminum foils in that casket. I was also going to break into the casket and try to steal the fucking coke, too. <laughs> That's, don't, don't get me wrong here. Don't think that I'm a fucking angel. Oh, Joe, he's going to dig up his mother because he missed her. No, there was cocaine in that casket. That's what else I was fucking thinking about. You know I'm a dirty bastard. But the beautiful thing was that while I was digging the fucking, while I was trying to dig the grave, I caught myself. And I was like, what the fuck is going on here? And I remember that like it was yesterday, me just like straightening out and going, God, just fucking take me, you know. I don't think I could do this anymore. And I lay there for a couple minutes. It was fucking freezing out. And I go, you know what? She's not even in this fucking grave. That's how demented I was. I was like, she's home. And I got out of the fucking cemetery and I walked straight to my fucking given that terrace 
And I'll never forget making that left turn on the corner and looking at my house and the lights were all turned off. I was like, fuck. So I walked up to the house. I had the keys to the house, but I was too scared to open the door. So I just rang the doorbell. I must have rang the doorbell 50 fucking times. And I kept telling the Ma, open up the door. She was fucking dead. I saw her at the funeral parlor. I saw her in a fucking casket. I saw them close the casket. I saw them do the math, the mass, the math. I saw them do the mass, and I saw them put her on the fucking ground. I actually personally picked up a shovel and threw dirt on her and threw a rose on top of her, and my mind still couldn't believe that she was fucking dead. That's insane to me. When I think of that, it just makes me fucking sad as fuck. You know, the last year... I struggled a lot with my mental health, with the withdrawals. I was just fucking going nuts. And uh, I thought about, like, when was the last time I struggled like this? And it was then. I couldn't get it together. You know, the reason why I write a journal for my daughter, and I give them to my wife, and I tell my wife, I go, listen, I'm going to probably have 10 journals. I don't know when I'm going to die. I mean, that's that's a $1,000 question. I don't know when the fuck I'm going to die, but I don't know how many journals I'm going to have for her. But as soon as I die and as soon as you bury me, you have to give her these journals because I don't want her to lose it the way I lost it. You know, as children, we all have questions. You know, when you lose a parent, we, we forgot to ask them certain questions. You know, I was 16 when my mother died. When I was a kid, I asked questions, but once I turned the... Uh, once I became a teenager, I never asked any fucking questions. What do I give a fuck? I'm trying to get my dick sucked. I'm trying to fucking figure out how to get my dick sucked. I don't give a fuck about where my grandmother was born or where my <laughs> my father went to school and all that shit. I didn't give a fuck about that. But that was part of my torment. That's what drove me to snort coke. That's what drove me to fuck. I mean, when I got back to New Jersey last year, I... You know, I was scared of COVID. We all were, you know, we were cautious of COVID. But I also had a little fear in my heart of coming back here for all the things I had done. You know, I really let my friends down. I let myself down. I let a lot of people down. I did some fucking bad shit before I left here in 83, 85. And when I got back here, I remembered a lot of those things. Like it came up to my mind and it affected me a little bit. It affected who I talked to. I just wanted to make sure that there was no bad blood. I didn't want any beefs or anybody. You know, I was coming back here for 20 years, just a weekend or two weekends a year. I knew it was going to be different when I moved back here. So I thought about all the bad things I had done, and I couldn't believe I, that that was me. And I'm going to tell you something. I would love to be able to blame it on cocaine. You know, everybody blames shit on cocaine. And there's a lot of things I blame on cocaine because now I realize that it was the cocaine that made me do it. I didn't have those things in my heart. It wasn't in my heart to kidnap somebody. It wasn't, that's never been in my heart to throw somebody in the trunk of a car. Or, and it's never been in my heart to steal something. I always hated stealing something. Don't get me wrong. I love shoplifting lighters from time to time from 7-Eleven. You know what I'm saying? Everybody likes to steal a good lighter. But my, I was never a fucking thief, guys. I never dreamed of robbing a jewelry store or robbing the amount of houses or robbing the businesses and the drug dealers I did. I'm very ashamed of what I did. But I got to be honest with you. I was out of my head at the time. I was a 17-year-old kid who had just lost his fucking mother. I didn't know whether I was coming or going. You guys know me for years. You guys know I'm not a big guy for making fucking excuses. But this is an excuse I have to make because it's the truth. And I just realized that recently. I realized that maybe six months ago when I was journaling that the things I had done weren't from the heart of Joey Diaz. It was from the heart of the cocaine. The cocaine just had me fucking crazy. I didn't know that. I would never blame anything on cocaine. You guys know that when I kidnapped Ken Vela, the attorney even said to me, hey, you went to the dentist this morning, they put you on the nitrous oxide. I can maybe get you a fucking a different case, maybe get the charges dropped. You didn't know what you were doing. And I said, no, I knew what I was doing. 
I knew what I was doing. It was the torment of the coke that made me rob that guy. Don't ever get it wrong. Yeah, you know, I got my teeth fixed that morning and the whole thing, but that's bullshit. It was me who did it. And it's the same thing when I talk about these things that I did. Listen, guys, when I was a young kid, I was confused. I had lost my hero. I was trying to figure out the world without my fucking hero. And I did some things that were fucking, uh, you know, if I would have been a woman, I would have been promiscuous. You know, I didn't think any, I had no value in my life. I had, I had nothing. I had fucking nothing. I had nothing to rest back on. I had done anything. I hadn't done anything, nothing. I was just a fucking kid. So I didn't know one thing or another. Now I know if my mother was to die today and I went out and started robbing houses at 58 years old, we got a fucking problem. You know, first of all, I don't even think I could rob a fucking house. I'm too fat to be a burglar. I don't think I could fit in a fucking window now. Or pick. I, try, I remember when I tried to break into my own house, I had a hard time. I climbed in the window and I landed. My stomach landed on the windowsill and I got stuck there for like fucking eight minutes. And all I could do is feel this shit out, coming out of my asshole and I had a shit in the backyard and the landlord thought it was a fucking bear. I can't break into houses no more. My fucking burglary days are over. It's got to be a quick one. I kicked the door and take the fucking box of cookies and get the fuck out. I can't. I don't have time to be looking around. I don't have cardio or endurance. When you fucking rob shit, your heart beats up a storm and you hear like a little fucking whistle while you're robbing. You hear like a little beep because you're nervous. You, your adrenaline is up. Your fucking heart is pumping. I would have a heart attack now. My fat little heart couldn't fucking handle that. But to get back to the fucking story, I... I would have lost my mind. And like I said, if I was a woman, I would have probably became promiscuous. I would have done shit like that because you do things to yourself. I would have probably become a slicer. Years later, I mean, the thievery, once the thievery disappeared, the cocaine took over. It wasn't even the pain of my mother anymore. It was the fucking cocaine. And I fucking was picking my face with a tweezer and getting holes in my face, which is uh, another fucking gesture for fucking slicing. It's it's slicing, but in a different fucking way. I wouldn't look at myself in the mirror when I was coked up. All these things were from coke. That's a complete different fucking story. When I kidnapped Bella, that was from coke. But all those things I did early on, before 1985, like when I fucking beat my godfather, do you have any idea how much I love my godfather? I think about my godfather every time I see Charles Bronson, every time I see Steve McQueen, every time I see one of these old movies that I saw as a child, I think about my fucking godfather and how good he was to me. What the fuck possessed me to beat him? You know, not beat him in a fight. I didn't beat him like that. I beat him out of money for cocaine. You know, what possessed me to do something like this? You know, I hunt him down. You know, I don't know if he's dead. I don't know he was alive. Last thing I heard, he was down in the Florida Keys. When I hired the investigator for my daughter, I had him fucking look for him. He couldn't, I, my daughter, he could find this guy. He could not fucking find. He could not find a death certificate for him. So we're trying to figure out what, yeah, I don't know what happened still. to my God. Yeah, still, I don't know where my God, I mean, he's 80-something years old. You know what I'm saying? He's not mad at me no more, but I would love to. I would love to get the chance to apologize for what I did to him. You know, my uncle, I, I fucked him with him up too. Thank God we have a great relationship today. I was mad enough to fucking go down there, shake his hand, apologize to him. I have no problems with apologizing. Right now, what I'm trying to get to the root of the matter is why I did it. And that's why I did it. My mother's death took me down hard, man. It just wasn't a death. I see... People, we, listen, there's always a reaction to death. You're always going to react a certain way. You're going to notice that you're drinking a lot more. Maybe you're doing more drugs. Maybe you're doing more anxiety medication. There's something. But there's always, always a reaction to a death. Sometimes it's minimal. Sometimes people, I have a friend who lost his daughter. Lost his fucking daughter in a car accident. I talk to him monthly. We've been friends for, fuck, since I started comedy, maybe 92, you know, and he lost a daughter. 
I call him a lot. I talk to him a lot. Didn't affect him at all. He's got another child, and he moved on from me. You know, I was thinking about Sylvester Stallone the other day. He's re-releasing Rocky IV, and I was thinking how he lost his son maybe eight years ago, seven years ago, six years ago, and he's doing great. He didn't end up robbing anybody or fucking jumping out windows or lighting anybody on fire, you know what I'm saying? I mean... The way I reacted to my mom's death is the way a child would react to something like that. I didn't fucking know any better. But today, in 2021, 42 years after her death, November 8th, this weekend is Halloween weekend. And what happened basically was this. Halloween 1979, I went to a party. I told my mother, it was an adult party. It was an older kids' party. I told my mother a few days before that, I'm going to this party, blah, 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 blah. She's like, listen, I don't care if you go to the party. Just remember the fucking rule. Let me know what time you're going to come home. Call, blah, 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 blah. You know, you got to call. every. So what it meant was, as I was leaving the house, if I looked at it and I go, I'll be home early, she would say, what time? I would say, Let's say midnight. So during the week, I would tell her my curfew was 12, and I would be home at 10, 45, 11. I just would say 12. But on the weekend, I would say 12, and if I wasn't home at 12, I had to call her. I had to stop what I was doing, call her, and say, listen, I'm not going to be home. And then she would say, what time are you going to be home? Two. I would just throw out there, two. And she would go, fine, I'll see you at 2. If you're not going to be home at 2, make sure you call me. That was the rule in the house. And I stuck to it. I stuck to it because I didn't want any problems. And I didn't want to get punished. I had a great life. I, I was allowed to stay out. My friends could only be out till fucking 10 o'clock. I could stay out till 2. There was only two kids in the neighborhood that could stay out till 2. Me and this other fucking guy. That's it. Brett Ernst has a great joke about that he grew up in Jersey. And growing up in Jersey, there's always one kid that's always out. You could go out at 3 in the morning. He's always out. What are you doing? That was me growing up. I was always fucking out. I didn't want to go home early in case I missed something. You you don't want to be Joe Jerkoff after you leave. Some chick shows up and sucks everybody's dick. But you were at home watching Benny Hill like a faggot that you are. You know what I'm saying? So you never want to go home when you're having fun when you're in this neighborhood. So <laughs> I uh, I just didn't. I didn't have a, a fucking curfew. So the night of the Halloween party, it wasn't really on the 31st. It was like on the weekend. I stayed out till 5 in the morning. I called. But the last time I had called, she sounded tired. So I said, I'm not going to call anymore. I've already called her eight times in a fucking night. And when I got home that night, we got into a fucking argument. She's like, where the fuck have you been? You're supposed to call. And I was just sick of her shit. You know, I was 16. In my mind, I was a man. So I gave her some fucking bullshit answer. And she smacked me. Smacked me like once or twice. I went to my room. I could tell that she had a lot in her, on her mind. My mom, at that time, she was broke. She lost her business. She was struggling. I, on the other hand, I was making money. I was selling drugs. I hit the number. I was helping her out with dope. And she came up the next morning, and she uh, woke me up and apologized. And she said something to me that stayed with me the whole fucking time. And it, I heard it right after I thought about Colleen's mother. My mother said, listen, I really don't give a fuck what you do. I just, the only thing that's important to me is that you grow up to be a man. Now, she had said this to me a couple times over the year, over the years, but for, but this time it sounded, um, this time it sounded real and it sounded different. Like after it was all over and when I was out that day, I thought about it. I can't believe my mother told me to grow up to be a fucking man. And by man, she doesn't mean a guy that's getting his dick sucked and fucking up. She just, um, you, you get... To understand, my, my mother was a big woman lady. Like, she wasn't a feminist or whatever these fucking crazy women are today. She just backed women, you know. Like, my mother raised me to be fucking tight with women. So she would mention to me little things that I had to do. As, you know, she would just say to me, when you get older and you're married, 
you got to do this for your wife. You got to do that. And I would look at her like, who the fuck is getting married? You know, like I would always say those things to her. But she was preparing me. She was telling me little things. And after she died, like that day, when I, that night when I found her on the floor and I looked at her, and I'm like, yeah, fuck, I can't believe I was not friends with Colleen anymore because she didn't have a mother. Now I'm the same person. I also said, fuck. She wanted me to grow up to be a man. Now I understand what it is. And after the fucking ambulance took her that night, I sat on my steps for maybe an hour and a half thinking of those words. And part of the reason I was cutting myself all those years, part of the reason I was doing the drugs, part of the reason I wasn't happy was because I wasn't a man. November 15th, 2007, that's the day I stopped snorting cocaine, and that was the day I was officially on my way to becoming a man. And after I got my head clear, like after 60 days and stuff, I didn't go to AA. I didn't use AA to stay clean or NA to stay clean. They would have been a great option. I didn't use them not because I didn't want to because I used my mother's words as my therapy. All those things she had said to me over the years, you know, whether it was grow up to be a man, you know, when you take the garbage out for your wife, no woman wants to come home and see her husband sitting on a couch watching TV. My, my wife, my, my wife, my mom would just say little things to me, like little things, like, listen, your wife doesn't want you to clean the house, but she appreciates if you clean your toilet. You know, my mother taught me to clean the bathroom so I would clean the toilets. And today, from time to time, I clean the toilets. I take the garbage out for my wife. I support my wife. I, I'm a father to my daughter. You know, when I make a mistake, I cop up to it. Hey, I made a mistake. What do you want from me? These are all the traits of a man. This is what a man is supposed to do. The bigger the man, the bigger the mistake. You know, apologize, fucking stick to your word. You know, when you write your goals, stick to your fucking goals. You know, I was telling somebody that I've been taping for the last six months. Nobody's watching me. I'm not part of a program. I'm not involved with a rehab or anything like that. I can do whatever the fuck I want. I have not missed it one time. You know why? Because I finally became a man. And I became a man fucking late, guys. I became a man at the age of 49, at the age of 50, was when everything came to my mind for me that I was prepared to be a man. I was not a man before that. I was just a fucking big kid. And I'm a big kid now. I laugh at farts, and I scratch my nuts and sniff my fingers and all that dumb shit. But in the big picture, I'm a man, and that's what I'm very thankful for. Like, for me to bust through this fucking thing I was going through, you know, even like the other day I was talking on a podcast about better help with therapy, all this has helped me, but my therapy was made easier because I knew that I had accomplished my mom's dreams for me. Sometimes we achieve our goals, and I achieved my goals. I hit the spot. I, I did more than what I anticipated I was going to fucking do, and that's okay. But there was one other thing I had to do until for me to be happy, and that was become a man under my mom's standards were for being a man. And I reached it. And for that today, I'm proud. So I want to dedicate today's Uncle Joey's Joint to Denora Valdez, my mother. Because for the first time in my life, I could look at the pictures and be happy. And I'm going to tell you something else. <clears throat> I don't care if you people think I'm crazy. <clears throat> I don't care if you people think I'm out of my fucking mind. The last year, Every night, I don't do it every night. I do it maybe four or five nights a week. I turn the TV off. Before I go upstairs, I got a picture of my mother in the basement. I got a picture of my father. I sit on my chair, and I just have a conversation with them, as crazy as it sounds. I thank her for giving me those words for me to become a man, and I thank my father. I tell him to look after my child. I tell them to look after my wife. I tell them to look after me, and I and I 
tell him I love him. I do that four or five nights a week to myself. Sometimes out loud, sometimes to myself. I like to do it out loud so I hear the words, so it makes me feel better and it brings me comfort. So today's podcast is dedicated to Denora Valdez. She's going to be dead 42 fucking years, and I still miss her like she died fucking yesterday. I still love her as much as I do. So when you reach out to me with a message about somebody in your family died, your mom or your dad, I'm going to lie to you, but I want you to understand that it never goes away. The pain never goes away. The thinking about them never goes away. Missing their food never goes away. Missing their smell, the way their hair smells, or it never goes away. And guess what? That's good because they're not dead. Do you follow me? They're dead when you don't stop thinking about them. But every time you think about them and go, Mom, thank you for today. Dad, thank you for today. You know, all those things, you're keeping them alive. They're not dead. They're still alive in your heart. So I don't know what you do to make uh, yourself feel better when you think about a grandmother or grandfather. I know there was a lot of loss with the pandemic the last two years. I know a lot of people suffered. So I hope these words help you. These words comfort you. I haven't done one of these podcasts in a while. I'm sorry I didn't have a guest today, but I wanted to do this podcast with my mom. I had been thinking about it for a week, and I was starting to go into it on Monday's podcast, and I was like, nah, I'm not ready yet. And today I was ready. So we'll have a guest uh, next Wednesday for November. I'll uh, light a candle for her on November 8th, two Mondays from yesterday. And that's it. Guys, the pain never goes away. All you could do is be a better person to make them happy so you could be happy about the transition. I don't feel bad about my mother no more. Like there was a time I felt shitty because I wasn't living the life she wanted me to live. Today, October 27, 2021, even though it took me 42 years, today I'm living the life she wanted me to live. And for that, I'm fucking happy as fuck. And that's today's Uncle Joey's Joint. I hope you motherfuckers enjoyed it. I hope you motherfuckers got something out of it. I know a lot of years, like I said, lost somebody. I hope this podcast helps you today. And that's it. I just want you to know I'm in your motherfucking corner. You got this. And if you didn't get one of those laughing gas blunts yet, you're fucking slipping, cocksuckers. Because that'll help you get through the pain, too. I don't know if I was telling Mike, for you guys that don't know, that laughing glass blunt has an eighth of weed in it. It's got an eighth of fucking weed in it. I want you guys to know, you fuck with that blunt, you're going to fucking end up on the losing side of that fucking blunt. Mm -hmm. I'm just letting you know right now so you know. Laughing Gas Blunt is available at the ice cream shop. It is fucking tremendous. That I that weed won another award last week in San Diego. It had won that cup when it first came out a year ago. That weed is on fucking fire. So if you're not fucking around with Laughing Gas... Now, I'm going to bring it to you with Packwood's Blunt. You're going to pay for it, but remember, it's a hell of a fucking blunt, and it's got three and a half grams in there. It's not your fucking ordinary blunt, and it's got treated THC paper to push you over the top. So if you didn't want to jump off that building, when you smoke this, you will jump off that motherfucking building. I hope this podcast helps you out. Thank you for listening to The Joint. Thank you for watching The Joint. I love you motherfuckers with all my heart. I'll see you cocksuckers next Monday, November fucking 1st, All Souls Day. Stay black. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you motherfuckers Monday morning. Tip top magoo, November 1st. Stay black. And now for a word for my motherfucking sponsors, Jack. All right, you bad motherfuckers. I want to thank you guys for listening to the dedication to my mom today. I had a good time doing this podcast. I wanted to get it off my chest. But before we leave, 
a word from our sponsors. The podcast is brought to you by today, Wednesday, the 27th, CBD Lion. For all your CBD needs, CBD Lion is there for you. Do me a favor. Go to CBDLion.com. Read the third-party lab results. Read about all their products and get the help that you need today. Whether it's aches, pains, anxiety, you can't sleep, CBD Lion will have something to help you. Again, go to CBDLion.com, press and code Joey or Joint, and get 20% off CBD Lion delivered to your house. The Joint is also brought to you by DraftKings.com, the official sports betting partner of the UFC, the official sports betting partner of the NBA, and the official sports betting partner of the NFL. This Saturday night, live from Abu Dhabi, it's UFC 267, Blankowitz against Glover Teixeira. Listen, DraftKings is there. What we're going to do is this. If you bet $5 on any fighter, if your guy wins... You get 200 in free bets. 200 in free bets. Will the champ hang on to his belt or will the veteran from Brazil snatch it from him? Either way, if you bet five bucks, you could win 200 in free bets if your fighter wins. Listen to me. I love DraftKings. Why? Because you can't bet over your head. Everything is controlled. Okay? Plus, they got all the sports you need from soccer to rugby to fucking table tennis in China to fucking social media. So once you join DraftKings, you got Uncle Joey on social media fucking around with you. It's fun. Whether you use the casino, whether you bet on basketball or the UFC, this is the time of the year. You got the World Series. You got UFC next week, 268, live from Madison Square Garden. Why are we having this conversation? DraftKings is safe, secure, reliable, and you can withdraw your cash whenever the fuck you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today. Right now, use promo code Joey. You throw down five dollars on any UFC 267 main event, and you win $200 in free bets if your fighter comes through. That's code Joey this Saturday night at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the UFC. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit. That's all I'm asking you for. And a $1 wage is required. One per customer. That's the only problem. You can only do it one time and restrictions do apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details now if you got a gambling problem you got to call 1-800-GAMBLE you got to take care of that or 1-800-WITH-IT if you're in Indiana but if you don't have any problems it's time to download the Daily Fantasy app from DraftKings or the Sports Betting app from DraftKings and it's time to make some motherfucking money I love DraftKings and so the fuck will you the joint is also brought to you by the best underwear of all time me undies made with modal the softest fucking thing on this planet they're comfortable they're soft and i'll tell you what's good about thanksgiving these puppies can fucking stretch because if you're eating fucking me undies if you're eating thanksgiving at my house you're gonna need me undies we got pasta we got meatballs we got everything you can eat seconds you can eat thirds and you don't have to worry about your fucking band and the me undies ain't like the regular underwear where if a fat guy puts them on and then you put them on they're fucking the same size uh-uh me undies are fucking tremendous they're perfect this thanksgiving give your gratitude some attitude you might not get along with your fucking crazy family but if you give your cranky old fucking grandpa's some brand new undies he might fucking flip his wig he's been wearing those cotton fucking pieces of shit with yellow stains since he was born since 1908 take a chance grandpa columbus did cocksuckers me undies is the perfect partner to get you through the holidays you throw on your fucking one seat forget about it it'll hug your butt with softness perfect for watching a game taking a post dinner nap while you scratch your balls the best part is me undies is for everybody available in sizes from extra small to 4xl me undies has a little something for everybody at the motherfucking table now me undies has a great offer for you for the joint family and you know i love me undies guys they're great. And you know what? I always, I stop wearing underwear because I hate wearing underwear with jeans because the fucking, it just makes me feel creepy. 
with me on these, I don't have that problem because they're the best underwear made. Comfortable, they fit right, they hug your nutsack, you don't sweat because the material keeps it, it ventilates your nutsack. Oh my God, you manscape your nuts and then you put me undies on, ba boom. If you're not satisfied with any product for any reason, you can return your order for a full refund within 45 days. That's the me undies guarantee. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get you 15% off your first order, free shipping. And 100% satisfaction guarantee. Do me a favor. Go to MeUndies.com slash Joey. MeUndies.com slash Joey. That's MeUndies.com slash Joey. The best underwear in the business. Comfort. And it just hugs your nuts. Nug sack. Magnifique. I want to thank MeUndies. I want to thank Onnit. I want to thank CBD Lion. I want to thank DraftKings. And who else do I have to thank you? I don't even know. Oh, better help. I want to thank all you guys for sponsoring the show this week. They're five tremendous fucking sponsors. I love these companies. And I love you motherfuckers too. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you cocksuckers Monday morning. Tip top motherfucking Magoo. I love you guys. Stay black. <laughs>